Sandra Shabani. I'm from Jordan, or my mom is from Jordan and my dad is from Kuwait. And uh, I study international relationships and uh, human rights, actually, because I want to be a lawyer. Um, I'm 17 and I work in a cafeteria. I was born here in Malmö um, in 93 and uh, at a young age like when I was five, six, um, I tried to play with the kids, the Swedish kids, um, but it felt, it felt hard because they didn't understand me, you know, I'm Arabic and my parents is Arabic, they speak Arabic, we have a different culture. So it was big differences between the cultures. That's why I think it's a big reason to why I started isolating myself when I was very young. And my mom used to tell me that I'm very isolated as a person too. I cried for every little thing and uh, I was very sensitive. first time I went to Jordan, I think I was like six or seven, um, and uh, I loved it. I, I wanted to stay there because uh, I was so young and I, I played with the kids and everyone was speaking Arabic and my cousins and everything felt so good. And my mom, I, I was very happy because I saw her happy all the time together with her sisters and everything. When I'm in Jordan, everyone is like, oh, it's the Scandinavian people even though I speak Arabic and I'm Arabic. At this point, I don't speak Arabic as good as I speak Swedish, so it's, it's a big difference. You wanna, I, I wanna be like a tourist there, not more. I, I, I feel like uh, when, when we go to Jordan, I love it the first two days and then after like one or two weeks I I get bored and I'm, I get tired and I want to go back to Sweden but still when I'm in Sweden I want to go to Jordan because I feel like Sweden is not my country At a young age I was uh, I was very ashamed, yeah. I was um, actually, um, I wasn't proud of being Arabic. I was very ashamed to say that I'm Arabic and I'm a Muslim. Um, it felt very hard because the Swedish uh, kids, um, you know, they had different rules, they had a different life, they had a different style of everything, you know, so I tried to become more like them and after you know a year or two when I was young I I knew it was impossible to be a Swedish kid or feel like a Swedish kid I would I, I think um, for every new generation, you become more Swedish. I, I want to keep um, holding strong to my culture and my religion. Um, a half-brother, he's 21 now he lives in Jordan he used to live here but he went to Jordan actually he fell in love with a girl here and they ran together to Jordan because their parents wouldn't let her marry my brother and I think it was in the early 90s the war between Kuwait and Iraq, um, it was the biggest reason why my dad moved to Jordan. That in, back in Kuwait where he lived, he sat in jail for two years. Um, I don't know exactly why, 
So they, he had to leave the country. And in Jordan, he couldn't get, um, uh, what to say, a citizenship. Yeah, he couldn't get one. So they had to go outside the country. So they chose Sweden. More and more people are coming to Sweden from Middle East because of war and stuff, so. My name is Simon Persson and uh, I'm coming from China. I was adopted when I was one year old and now I'm living in Malmö. Uh, they went like, they stayed in China for two weeks and went every day, a little more and a little more to, to, to make me uh, start to recognize them and yeah, used to, to them. Yes, I, I'm, I'm very happy for, for the opportunity that I got. With, uh, without adoption, I wouldn't have the, uh, the same opportunity to learn education. I'm very sure about that. And uh, coming so far and doing what I'm doing today. The opportunity to, to be able to adopt have been like a ch chicken chance for them. So they are very happy about this that they, they, they have the chance to, to get, a sh get children, even if they biologically couldn't. To be a parent, that's something that you would, I would like to say, earn. I have uh, always been very sure about my roots and where I come from. Thanks for the fact that my parents always have been telling me and always been very, uh, very aware that I should know about this. I have uh, new memories uh, from my bio biological family. Uh, my mother, she born me when she was at least what we think she was very young maybe between 16 20 something there and uh, she went to the hospital she gave birth to me and then she left the hospital because she didn't have uh, enough resources and time to take care of me and uh, the father I have no idea about I'm still, my nationality is Swedish and I'm also still Chinese today, uh, but I feel more Swedish than Chinese. I have heard lots, lots of, uh, what do you say, bad words about me, about, yeah, all things around ra racism and, uh, yeah. It, it, but it has never been too much of a problem because I always have been having friends around me that kind of try to protect me. There are some people always that are races like they are having different opinions than others and uh, it doesn't really matter where you go races you can find races in whatever country you go to that, that's something that's that's everywhere so that's not something something particular for Sweden I wasn't too sad because I already knew about the things that my parents have told me in there but I was maybe a bit angry about their behaviors. Like, why are they behaving like this? It's just very, very stupid. And uh, the other 
there are some of the other adopted uh, children. They went really sad and yeah, some of them were crying and so, so it wasn't, uh, yeah, it's not that pleasant, but th that's something that you have to deal with, with uh, in life. My name is uh, Zulaima Sadikin. I uh, I'm uh, 30 years old, and I uh, was well, I'm married with uh, and I have uh, two children, Sofia and Rizky. Um I came to Sweden for uh, f four years ago. Before I came to Sweden, I have job, I have family, I have anything. And my mother and my father, they always wish if I came to Sweden, I can have a good job. And, and I wish too I, have, I can have a good job, but not, it's really easy. They didn't accept my uh, graduation or certificate in, in Indonesia, so I must to study m uh, more in Sweden. I met Kiki in Indonesia when uh, he uh, he was uh, on holiday, and just three days we met each other. And then she, her, he asked me, "Will you marry me?" I say yes. That yeah. I say to Kiki, if we uh, if we can uh, move to Indonesia, I will take care of you all my life. But not in Sweden, I don't know, because I must take care about the children and I must uh, go to the job and I must to study. Sometimes I so tired, I'm, I feel so tired with the children. And I said to Kiki, oh no, I can't stand it anymore. I said to Kiki, can we go out and, or can we go to Indonesia? I didn't want to stay in Sweden because uh, I think it's a really bore to stay in Sweden. They have uh, the people in Sweden, they are so really uh, quiet and not familiar to meet another people uh, like uh, immigrant or something but after after one or two years I stay in Sweden and I go back to Indonesia I stay in Indonesia six months and I get bored in Indonesia uh, Sweden culture is uh, the children can uh, decide anything for their life and the parents didn't have a power to control the children. I not, I, I really not like that. Be, uh, and um, th uh, for example, when you meet your parents in Sweden, you can just go without say hello or hey mama, hey daddy. No, you just go. Now in Sweden, after the school, if uh, when the children uh, come to, to come from the school, come to home from the school, and they won't go out, even it's night, the night, you can you cannot to say no, you can go out, you must to stay at home. No, you you cannot uh, do that because they can call police and the police come to you, and it's a. Uh, really it's a uh, really criminal in sweden is it strange in sweden we have a uh, summer uh, town you did you uh, it's better not go there there because they uh, are strange people 
did not uh, open and uh, welcome to immigrant. I have met some people like Harsh. They look at me and say, no, you're not good, they're here. It's not good for you, you must go there. Like that. And uh, are you stupid? They just like, you are immigrant, you are not welcome in Sweden, like this. But that not, that's not all the people in Sweden. My name is Jack Dan. I'm 66 years in July, and I'm from Israel in the beginning. I came to Sweden in '69 uh, for the first time because I met uh, my wife uh, on a boat between Israel and Italy. It's happened what's happened, and she got pregnant. I left Israel, and I came to Malmo. It was so damn cold, so much snow. So I, I said to myself, no way, no way. I will stay here for a while and then back to Israel. All my life I've been uh, around the uh, sports. Uh, actually, more in football and in, in, in anything else. I played here in Malmo, I played, uh, and I've been coaching a lot of teams, and played up to two years ago. Even 64 years, I played a Serie A games. As a kid, I started playing for soccer, because it was a big game. And from that, I, I went all the way up, from five years up to 18, when I played for the national team too. When I came to Sweden, the, the news for today, it's a yellow page. I, and when I came to Sweden, it was reading Jack Dan from Israel, a national team to Yves Kumalmo. And when I went on the bus, everybody look at, uh, was looking at me like, uh, uh, not suspicious as today. They were, it was like open arms and they wanted to talk to me. They wanted a con contact, not like today. Today they turn you, know, they're, they're back to you and they look at you in very badly way. my life uh, a physical education teacher in school here in Malmo and my relation to the children was fantastic I mean I no matter what they are from I accept them as they are and uh, that's why maybe I never had any problem with the, about religion or about uh, dark or white people or whatever. I've been respected from Palestinian children. You know, the Palestinian children are not allowed, to, the girls, not allowed to hug any foreigners. But me, when in school, they, just, they was just jumping on me and hugging me. And when I left school, many of them cried. Yeah, I remember 56 uh, war, very tough, very tough war, and it was scaring. And I remember that we were, how we were putting a tape uh, windows, so because uh, there was bombing, and it was uh, 
scaring. It was not fun at all. I lost a brother when he was 18 in the war, in 70. Myself, uh, 67, I've been called. Uh, it was a war, six days war. And I supposed to do the military, but I, I came, I, I came by, I said it's, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. And uh, I was there only for three months and then I left. So they, because I didn't want to go to war. I believe that uh, the politician think that uh, they know what they're doing. For, for us, normal human being, we don't get it. We don't get it. I don't think so.